So today we're going to create a camera match in Maya using the Arnold Renderer. And so the first thing I want to do is create a camera. So I'll just go up here and say create and create our camera here. Just a free camera, right like that. And uh, we'll just move it back here. We're going to be moving it around quite a bit here, but we'll just put it there for right now. And let's go ahead and get into our attribute editor here. And the first thing that we want to do is load in the image that we're going to use. And we want to load that in as a camera image plane. So I'm going to grab that, create that right like that. And then we'll grab our image plane here and use this backplate image that I've just taken a photograph here of. So let's just go ahead and open that. You can see there it is. And then let's just middle mouse our camera in. You can see there's our screen. Let's go ahead and set up our render here so that it matches our image um, and so that we're able to get exactly the same kind of camera that I used to take a picture of the shot. So first, let's go into our render settings and let's change the resolution of what we're working with here. And we can always change this a bit later, but for starters, we're going to go ahead and, and do this just so we can make sure we get a, a perfect match. So if we take a look at our image, it's right here in our sources folder. I'm going to right click on that and go into its properties. And we go into its details and we can see the dimensions of that right there. So let's just go ahead and put those in here. So 3, 4, 5, 6 and 2304. Now that's a really, really big image. So I want it to render a little smaller than that. So I'm just going to say maintain weight and height ratio here. And then I'll put it down at something a little bit more manageable. I'm going to throw in a 1280 in there. And then we end up with that 854. And remember, we can always crop that later uh, depending on our needs for our render. But that's great. That's all we need to do right here. So we'll just close that out. Let's go ahead and turn on our resolution gate. We can see that's exactly what we're going to get for our render. Now, another thing that we can do within our image plane here is that we can fit it to either our resolution gate or our film gate. And you'll notice that right now they're very, very close, almost exact. Um, and that's a good place to set up your camera match. Once we have that, we can go ahead and change our resolution gate and then um, just stretch our image so it fits inside of that. Um, that uh, We'll perhaps do that at another time. All right, so we can rotate our camera just like we would normally, and we have our, our grid right in here, and we're really, the goal is, is that we're trying to match that table surface. And I find that it's a little bit easier to do without the grid, so I'm going to turn that off and instead create a plane. Now this is going to be a, a very specific type of plane here. So you can see that it's right there. And I'm going to go into this plane and I'm going to adjust its inputs, specifically its width. Now I happen to have measured from this little seam here to this little seam here and it's 11 inches. And so if we go into you know, our handy dandy Google here, we can find that 11 inches is 27.94 centimeters. So we'll just grab that and go ahead and put that into our width right like that. So we'll just paste that right into there. And you see, wow, that's a lot bigger. So let's scale that camera back a bit. And then we'll just adjust our, our height here. We'll just do a lot, right? Something like that for right now. Excellent. What I want to do next is hit four so I can see through that. And before I start trying to move this around and match those lines, what I'm going to do is go in again and change a little bit of my camera. So let's take a look at that image again and the properties here. We see further down, we can see that we've got our bed depth. We've got the type of camera that I took the picture with. More importantly, what I'm looking for here is this focal length. You can see that's set for 30 seven millimeters. Excellent. So we'll just go ahead and hit OK here. I'm going to select my camera, go into my attribute editor, and right up here where we have our focal 
length at the top, we're going to change that from 35 to 37, and that's going to help us match this much, much better. Excellent. So I'll just select that plane. Now, very, very important. What we don't want to do and what I'm not doing here is I'm not rotating the plane around. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just doing the Alt and the, the left mouse button there and moving that camera around. And so ideally, we want to set up. Let's maybe do a little zoom out here a little bit. And I'm looking to try to match this line and this line. Right, so maybe I'll bring and bring that back and around like that just a little bit. Maybe something like that. Maybe bring it up a little bit. Maybe zoom that camera out something like that. And so we can sort of see we're almost there. Maybe bring that something like that. And then we can move our line and see if it's moving along that edge. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. We'll just undo that. Let's just bring that just a little bit more, maybe right in. Oop, let's see. Just taking a little bit of time to do that. That looks like it lines up on that side. And it looks like it lines up pretty well on that side. So excellent. Now, the worst thing that could happen is if we moved this camera. So let's make sure that we lock down this camera. So we're going to go over into our, uh, our, our uh, transforms, and we'll select all of those and right-click on that and go ahead and lock select it there. Excellent. Now, I have an object in here. We'll just go ahead and unhide that, and we'll hit 5. You see right there is this little object. Now, the reason we didn't want to move this plane around is, you know, then we would have had to position our object to fit um, on that plane. This way, it's right on the ground plane, right on the ground grid, and we don't have to worry about that. Now, you'll notice we're getting a little bit of strange cropping here. The reason for that is because our image plane is too close to us. So we'll go back into that camera, into that image plane, and we can change this depth value right here. And I'll just middle mouse that and pull it out, oh, maybe around 150 or so, something like that. Excellent. I don't necessarily need to take this all the way out to there. Um, we're just going to place this object somewhere right in here. But we definitely need this to be a wider, so I'll just bring that out something like that. And then let's bring this maybe over here. And maybe put that something like that right there, maybe a little bit closer, something like that. Excellent. So how do we do this? Now, if we, we want to set up the lighting first, um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go into our perspective view so we don't mess up that camera. So you see there's our camera, there's our image plane. And let's try to mimic the lighting a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and use an Arnold area light. Let's scale that up, and let's rotate that, holding down J to snap that, oh, something like that, we'll say. All right, we'll bring it right over here, and we have a bunch of windows over here in, in this room. So we're going to just bring these over, maybe start with the big one right over here. So we'll just scale this, something like that. And that starts something like that. We'll go with that. And let's go ahead and give that some values here. So let's look through that camera again. Right there. And let's go ahead and trigger our Arnold render. Let's see. There it is. Okay. So very, very black in that. That means that we don't have very much light. So let's adjust the exposure of that. Let's put that maybe up to 10. Oh, let's go a little higher maybe. Let's go to 20. All right, okay. There, we're getting a lot closer, but obviously way, way too much light in that scene. So let's drop that back down. Let's do it around 15. All right, pretty good. A little bit too dark, but I'm okay with that um, for right now. 
So let's just close that up for a second. And let's make sure that we're looking at our resolution gate. Yeah, we had that on there. Good. And we want to um, make sure that we've got those other lighting in there. All right, so let's take this and let's just duplicate that. And we'll bring that over right about there. And we'll bring one more right about there. And now that I've seen that, I think these all need to be a little taller. So we'll go right something like that. And then we'll go back into that camera. Excellent. Let's see what that is. I'm expecting way too much light, but let's check it out. All right, awesome. All right, so eh, not as much light as I thought we would have, um, but there we are. Let's just make sure we can see our whole image. All right, letting that render through, good. And it looks like we need a little bit of fill light in here. You can sort of see we've got some fill light bouncing around. Um, I think that could also be a little bit brighter. So let's maybe change this aerial light. So we have that set to uh, 15. Let's try 16. All right, let's try making the other one 16. And this one also 16. Let's see if that's too bright. Well, let's leave that for right now. Let's go with that. All right, excellent. Let's take care of this plane here. Let's get rid of this. And let's just close this out while we do that. So I'm going to select this plane. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose new material. And the material we want to choose here is a Arnold shader. And we want to use the shadow matte shader right there. So let's see what that did. Wow, so much better, right? It actually looks like we're on the object now. We're placing it on there. That renders without that showing up. Looks really, really nice. All right, and we're able to get that. All we need now is a little bit more fill light, and I think we'll be ready to go. One of the things we want to make sure we're looking at is like, is the angle of the shadow the same? Looks pretty close to what I have over here. And then we definitely want to try to get in maybe some of these reflections possibly. All right, so let's stop that and close that out. Let's go ahead and um, add a little bit of that fill light. And I think I'll bring in another, oh, let's do another fill light of an area light over here. We'll take this right over here, scale this up a little bit. Oh, and let's bring that over here, maybe just something like that. And so there's not really a, uh, a light source over here, but the walls are big and white, and they're reflecting a lot of light around the scene. So we're going to just use this to create a bit of light in our scene here. So let's put that camera back in. And with that light selected, um, let's try a value of 10 here. And let's kick that off as a good render. We see a lot brighter in there. Also lightened up our shadows a little bit, which is nice. And, you know, not bad. Not bad. All right, so we could keep working with this a little bit. But let's get this reflection in here. All right. And so all of that is done inside of that AI shadow map material. So we're going to go ahead and open up the specular settings here. And let's see what happens when we turn that on. And we may need to kick that in. And look at that. We're starting to get some of those reflections. Very, very slight right now. But pulling that out into there. Looking very nice. Let's play around with this a little bit. If we mess with our roughness, which works just like our standard shaders, right? If we bring that down, we start getting more of a mirrored type of shader. And you can see we're getting a lot more of that coming through, sort of like this. Now, we'll notice over here, this is a lot blurrier than we're getting over here. So maybe we want to maybe bring this roughness up just a little bit. Let's try maybe a 0.05, right? Something like that. Oh, maybe a little bit more. Let's try a 0.07. 
right? Getting a little bit more fuzzy, sort of like this over here, and that's looking a little bit better. We could also play around with our index of refraction here. Now, if I put that lower, you'll see that I get a different result a little bit there. If I go, you know, a lot higher, you know, maybe like a four or something like that, you'll see the amount of reflection is a lot higher. Let's try something. Oh, let's try around a two. There we go. It sort of feels again a little bit closer to what we have here. I think I want to put this all the way up to maybe 0.1 to get that something like that. Excellent. Maybe even a little bit more, maybe 0.15. Now that we've increased that index of refraction, very nice. And we can also, if we wanted to, drop down that intensity bit. I'm not sure we need to, but let's try maybe a 0.9 just to kick that off. Something like that. Excellent. So we can do some very, very cool things with this type of look. And if we let that finish there, well, we can see how to do that. Cool. So, you know, again, we could keep tweaking the colors and, you know, maybe adjusting the light color on here. It looks like it's a little bit blue um, coming into that window here. Um, sure, we'll leave it up there. That's an accident. I locked that up in there, but hey, it works. Let's go into this area light here, and let's just change this to just a light, light blue. Something will start in here, maybe go all the way down here, maybe more like this type of blue. Super light, just to get a little bit of blue right in there. Excellent. And then we'll put that same blue into all of these guys right here. Excellent. And that gives us a little bit more tint in there. All right, let's uh, go ahead and see if we can pull this back out of here. There it is. And a little bit, maybe a little bit more color in there. Let's go in and a little bit more blue. Maybe something like that. Let's put that now in all of those. We'll just make sure that that's being saved there. Good. We'll switch this over into that little color swatch. And the same thing for that guy. A little bit more of a blue tint there, which is quite nice. Now we could also go ahead into this material and grab that and give it some color in itself, right? So we could go in and, you know, maybe make this so like a, a bright red, bring that color down a little bit, um, and we could even give it some reflections and stuff like that. Now, I don't have a reflection sphere or anything like that in there, so it's not reflecting uh, the environment, but if we had an HDR image of this, that would look like it would fit right in to that scene. So that's looking pretty cool. We're going to go ahead and uh, stop that there and let that render. Looking good. We'll see you next time. Have fun rendering.